Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mitch Hillavora, and I'm one of the co-founders of Back to the Roots, an urban mushroom farm right here in Oakland, California, growing gourmet mushrooms and mushroom kits on entirely recycled coffee grounds. And I'm really excited to spend the next 20 minutes or so that I have with you guys to one, kind of talk about how Alex, our other co-founder, and I went from investment banking and consulting to full-time urban mushroom farmers. How this has gone from a fraternity kitchen experiment to now a team of 29 people that delivered 1 million pounds of coffee ground waste from the landfill last year. And share with you guys a couple of fun examples from our story and from our business that have really proved to us that there's been a fundamental shift in consumers' expectations for businesses and how they're only rewarding those that are now doing good and doing well. But to start off with, I want to take a quick step back and kind of talk to you guys about where this all got started from. So it's a couple of years ago now, your last semester at UC Berkeley. And about two months away from graduation, uh, Alex had an offer to go into investment banking. I had an offer to go into consulting. Graduation's coming around the corner. You kind of think you know what you're doing. And we're sitting in a business ethics class. It's about a 100-person class, and we don't know each other at the time. We're both sitting in that class, and we hear a professor bring up the fact, and looking back now, pretty random fact, that he could potentially grow four main mushrooms on an entirely recycled coffee grounds. And something about the idea of turning, you know, waste into food kind of struck us both, inspired us both, and we both reached out separately to our professor and asked him, hey, that's kind of cool, do you guys have any more information? And he was like, honestly, I have no idea, but the other kid asked me about it too, you guys should link up. And so that's how we got, we got introduced, and we met up in Alex's fraternity, hit it off, started kicking around the idea, and it was right before spring break that we finally said, you know what, what the heck, let's give it a shot, let's try this thing out. And so we went around to a couple local Pete's Coffee cafes, kind of lugging back bags of coffee grounds and friends looking at us like, what are you guys doing? But got some mushroom spawn or seed donated to us and planted these 10 test buckets, literally like ace hardware paint buckets of mushrooms in Alex's fraternity kitchen closet and leave for spring break, still not really you know, thinking much of this whole idea. But we come back from spring break, and this is still probably one of the most incredible moments I'll never forget. We open that kitchen closet up and out of these 10 buckets, nine of them are just completely contaminated, nothing growing on them. But one of them just had just literally that bucket right there, I just poured a bunch of pearl oyster mushrooms right out of it. And that was really the first time we saw there's something to this idea. And I remember still like Alex had no background in food, weren't foodies at all. And Alex was like, hey Nick, you trying those? Like, Dude, I'm not trying these. I'm like, you trying this, I'm trying these. We didn't know what we were just going, but we're like, alright, what's the best restaurant in town? And like Chez Panisse is pretty close. Let's walk us over to Chez Panisse. And so we literally take that one paint bucket, an ace hardware paint bucket of mushrooms, walking into Chez Panisse, and Alice Waters, the founder, happened to be there. And she gets super excited. We tell her we're trying to go mushrooms more sustainably on coffee grounds. And she gets her head chef over, and he literally plucks off half of those mushrooms, sautes them up on the spot, tries them out, looks back at us, and like, oh, they look delicious. And Alex is like, man, if he says they're good, they've got to be good. So, you know, a little more, I guess, gonna spring in our step, a little more confidence. That same day, take that same paint bucket, minus half of those mushrooms, and then walk it over to the Berkeley Whole Foods. And not knowing anything about retail or distribution, it's kind of walking to the first guy we see in the produce department, and we're just packing the vegetables. And we're like, hey, we're trying to go mushrooms more sustainably on coffee grounds. And he's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. But you know, go talk to him about it. So we could pass to somebody else. And he's like, go talk to him about it. We could pass to somebody else. We must have talked to like 10 or 12 people in the Berkeley Whole Foods. And eventually they were like, you know what? Shoot us an email, and we'll go from there. So we shoot, shoot them an email, don't really hear anything for a little bit. But then two weeks later, we get an email from Randy DeCommon, who's a regional produce coordinator for the Northern California Whole Foods. And this is for, it's one of the funniest email chains from the store level up. But like, check out these two kids in Berkeley going shrooms. And you can imagine like, all the jokes going back and forth, right? From the store level up to him. He gets it, he forwards that to us. So like, I would actually, I'd love to chat. And we talked to Randy, we must have talked to him for like 45 minutes, and he too becomes really passionate about this idea of being able to grow food off of what was waste. And he's like, if you guys figure this out, we'll blow this up with Whole Foods. And we were sitting here last semester in college, eyes open, um, end up applying for a small grant from our chancellor, get a $5,000 grant from our chancellor, and about two weeks before graduation, then Alex and I were looking at each other and said, you know what, we got 5K in our pockets, we got mushrooms that taste good, <laughs> some hope and demand from Whole Foods, you know what, forget investment banking, forget consulting, full-time urban mushroom farming it is, and still right into it, and the next, next thing we knew, we were, uh, Collecting some coffee grounds and Pete's Coffee, one store, two cafes, three cafes, building some racks and kind of slowly scaling up and scaling up and eventually got up to growing about 500 pounds a week of fresh oyster mushrooms. 
uh, with all the local Northern California Whole Foods, farmers markets, and you know, along the way, we start having a lot of people from our community come back to us and tell us, you know, that's that's pretty cool, but can you guys take this one step more local? Can we do this ourselves? And that's really where this whole idea of these mushroom kits came about. We're like, how can we take this concept and make it one step more local? So after getting a lot of this feedback, we got really excited about it, and we used to go to the fresh mushrooms in big bags like this, these big basketball clear bags of fungus. <laughs> We thought that looked beautiful. We slapped a sticker on it, invited Randy, our regional buyer from Whole Foods, back to our mushroom farm. Like, Randy, we want to present something to you. So we show him a tour of the whole place at the end of it. Super excited, pull out a bag that looks like that with a sticker on it, and like, hey, Randy, check out this new product. It's a grow to home mushroom kit. We think it'll be awesome in your stores. And um, Randy, I'll never forget this. Randy looks back and he's like, guys, like, that's disgusting. He's like, no one's going to buy that. It's a cool concept though. Go back to your R&D team and figure it out. And Alex said, like, that's me and you sitting at Pete's Coffee working at the free Wi-Fi, you know? But sure, we'll you know, go back to our R&D team. And ended up taking this feedback though. He's like, cool concept, work on your design. So I took that concept, uh, kind of big bulky bags, and ended up shrinking the bag down. Eventually went through a couple of iterations of different box designs and packaging. Eventually to what it is now. Our main product, our Grow Your Own Mushroom Garden. And it's a little box. You put in your kitchen windowsill open the front panel up, and inside is actually all the mushroom roots already grown on their cycle coffee ground. So you slip the bag, mist it twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. In about seven days, it starts popping out, and by day 10, you get your first crop right on the front of the box. And it's just been so fun for us as a company to kind of see the experiences and the reactions we're getting from so many different people, from your families and kids, to your foodies, to your gardeners, just gift seekers. And over the last year or so, we've taken this concept now from one Berkeley Whole Foods to over 1,300 retailers nationwide. And just over the past six months, it's been so exciting for us too to kind of see the buzz that's starting to be really generated in our communities from such a wide variety of people. As we started really getting this product out there more and more, I started seeing a few things. One, that people were really embracing this concept of doing good and doing well. In this case, through our supply chain, taking a waste stream coffee grounds, diverting over 40,000 pounds a week now coffee ground waste in a landfill as a soil for our mushroom kit. But they were also expecting us and pushing us to kind of take that same mindset and apply it to different parts of our businesses, and then rewarding us to do so. And I'm really excited to kind of share with you guys a couple of fun examples of our business of how we saw this apply. So number one, it comes down to merchandising. As a small company, we quickly realized that no one was going into a store looking for a mushroom kit. And those that were, they couldn't find it. We had a store that had one kit down here, one kit up there, couldn't find it. And so we took this challenge to a lot of our mentors and advisors and said, we need to get better self-through, we need better awareness in stores. How do we do this? And kind of got one kind of unified answer. And what we needed was custom display shippers at all of our stores to really increase that presence in stores. And so we put the feelers out to a lot of different manufacturers and got samples back like plastic shippers corrugated cardboard display shippers, metal display shippers. And after we kind of had a good selection, we thought it all looked good, we kind of gathered these all up and set up a meeting with Randy, a regional buyer from Northern California Whole Foods. And we talked to Randy, and like, hey, Randy, we'd love to kind of get one of these in your store to really kind of help us increase our footprint in store. And remember, this is the same Randy who told us our bag looked disgusting about a year ago. And he was presenting these like, different options right in front of him. He's looking down the line, and he just said, guys, that's not you. These aren't you. And he pretty much rejected us on the spot. He said, I'm not putting this in the stores for you. And so kind of bummed, disappointed, and we gathered all three of these things back up, take them back to our team, and kind of tell them the bad news that we can't launch these in the stores. And we started brainstorming, like, what else can we do with this idea? How else can we do this? And it was really cool, because our manufacturing team actually came back to us, and they're like, I think we can make these ourselves and make them out of wood, but not just any type of wood. We can make them out of recycled pallet wood. Because they had seen so many other companies in West Oakland that were throwing away tons of pallets every single day. And taking that concept and kind of working on it, perfecting it, we've since launched our, what is in now our 1,000 retailers nationwide, which is our custom display shippers made out of 100% recycled pallet wood from local companies in Oakland, including Home Depot and local nurseries. Literally every single morning now, we have our collection van. We go out about 5 a.m., go to about 30 cafes, pick up the coffee grounds, drop us back off to our farm, go back out to Home Depot and these local nurseries, pick up their spent pallets, bring that wood back to our farm, break it down, refurbish it, and turn it what is into our display shippers for stores now. And perhaps the coolest thing about this whole story 
is that that big one on the right is actually in Home Depot. And last fall, we actually had 30 stored test rollouts in the Northern California uh, Home Depot. And it was so fun to be able to tell team leaders and team leaders um, about these displays that are being made off of their own trash and seeing their excitement and wanting to tell their customers about it. Like, this was our own trash that we've now been able to kind of recycle, bring back, and turn it into a beautiful display. And I think that combination of the excitement about kind of innovating off of a different waste stream plus the uniqueness of the mushroom kit led to an incredible test rollout and actually, based upon that, got the green light for a larger rollout and just this last week, uh, completed a 300 store Western Regional rollout in Home Depot, all using recycled pallet wood for their shippers from Home Depot themselves. So it's a really kind of cool close loop circle. And the second example I want to talk to you guys about is uh, through marketing. So the small company, again, we learned the lesson right away that no one was thinking about a mushroom kit, especially a copy the mushroom kit for gifts or family projects. There was no awareness about it. But as we kind of started growing and getting some more traction, we had, we had a lot of magazines and radio stations and websites approaching us for us to pay for print ads, radio spots, banner ads. But as a small kind of bootstrap company still, we couldn't afford it. But around the same time, we actually started realizing a couple cool things. Number one was that the best response we were getting from our kits was from kids. You tell kids to go tomato for 90 days, it's like a lifetime. But seeing something go right in front of your eyes in 10 days, it's just, it was so exciting for kids. And number two, we started seeing that people loved showing off their mushroom kids to their family and friends and posting them on our Facebook page so all their friends could see what they had just grown. And then we started seeing number three, that a lot of those posts were driving a ton of traffic to our website. So we had kids being inspired by the mushroom kits. We had people wanting to show off their photos on our Facebook page, and then that drove a lot of traffic. And we were finally able to put that together. And early last fall, actually, we launched a really cool one-for-one -one Facebook campaign for which every photo someone posts of their fully grown mushroom kit on our Facebook page will donate a kit and a sustainability curriculum to an elementary school classroom of their choice. And it's just been such an incredible response over the last couple of months, seeing hundreds and hundreds of photos coming in from people. We've reached over 10,000 students now across the country since we launched this program. I think one of the most exciting things about it too is that as this program really took off, we got more traction with it, we started seeing that Facebook became the second biggest driver of traffic to our website. In turn, it was leading to a lot of high margin direct to consumer sales from our website that was in and of itself funding this campaign. So it was like a self-fulfilling cycle of the more we gave, the more we got, the more we got, the more we gave, it's just kind of building upon itself. And it's just so exciting for us because so often in school you're taught, it's in business school, that giving back to your community or donating is like a temporary kind of short-term tax write-off. But it's really neat for us to be able to see, and we learned this from our community, that you could tie together marketing and your bottom line and giving back to your community in kind of one holistic circle. And, you know, actually, because of that, we've taken this concept from just a one-time kind of temporary campaign to a permanent product feature. So every single kit this year is being printed on the box to encourage people to post your photo on Facebook so we can donate one to school of their choice. And the last thing, and probably what I'm most excited to share with you guys about today, uh, is how we've taken this concept of trying to do good and do well to our product and to our product design. So we started really kind of getting the word out and launching the kits and getting some buzz around it. We had so many buyers come back to us and just pressuring us. You guys have got to leverage this buzz, launch some new products, and maximize your sales. And I can't tell you how many questions we got from, from buyers telling us, like, what's your new product? What's the next thing? Come on, guys, like, hurry up. But at the same time as we had that pressure, we had our current customers and our current community asking us, like, why can't you guys better this back to the roots mushroom garden experience? Why isn't the bag inside compostable? You know, can you guys make your instructions clear? What happens to the box afterwards? I mean, there's two very like, opposing pressures coming at us every single day. One from buyers and one from our customers and our community. And eventually, actually earlier this year, the beginning of this year, we finally sat down as a company and said, we've got to decide what do we want to focus on this year? Do we want to kind of leverage this momentum and launch new products? Or do we want to hone in and perfect this product and this product experience? And we actually made the decision to hone in and focus on this product right now this year. So I'm really excited to share with you guys two ways we're going to do that, actually both launching in the next six weeks. So number one, for the very first time, as a mushroom farm, we're demanding that the bags inside, the mushroom incubation bags, 
we're demanding for supplies that they're compostable. And the cool thing about this too is that because I think the scale we've hit now, we've been able to really work weather suppliers and innovate with them to design a compostable bag that's also cheaper than the market alternative. And the second thing, which is really fun for me to share with you guys right now, because I'm so excited about this, launching in about six weeks, is with our box. We're taking our box, which right now is currently just recyclable, and making it not just compostable, but plantable. So what that means is for the very first time as a consumer product, we're embedding vegetable seeds, tomato, parsley, onion, and basil, into the corrugated of the box. So once you're entirely done with the kit, you can rip up the box, throw it directly into the ground, and grow a whole new garden out of that. And the best thing about that, the probably for us, is that with the mushroom kit, you can grow the mushrooms from the front, and then you can turn the box around, grow your mushrooms from the back. And once you're all done, actually, once you're all done with the kit, <laughs> The leftover stuff inside, the leftover coffee grounds mixed with the mushroom roots is an incredible soil amendment for any of the plants at home. Tomatoes, flowers, things like that. So in this case, you get a kit, you grow your mushrooms, plant the box, and take your own waste from the mushrooms to fertilize that other garden coming out of it. So it's like a waste of food, waste of food model twice over. And around, we're just so excited for us to get this out to the community for them to experience it. And I think for us, we really get this so excited is images like when you see a kid first ride his bicycle. It's an experience they never forget for the rest of their lives. And it gave us all that confidence from a young age that we could take risks, overcome obstacles, and just have a sense of independence to us. And we want this kit, this mushroom kit, to be that for generations and generations to come. We want every single kid to, every single kid to be able to experience like how easy and fun it can be to grow your own food. In 10 days, you can grow your own food right at home. And for this to give them that confidence for the rest of their lives, they can be healthy, eat healthy, and kind of really take ownership and ask those questions, where is my food coming from? And for Alex and I, to be honest with you guys though, we don't really know if this is the right decision right now. The, the time and place of a business to focus in on one product, we don't really know if it's going to affect our bottom line year from now. But we are confident, and we're confident for the reason because we really believe been a fundamental shift in consumers' expectations for the businesses they admire and that they want to reward with their support. And 50 years ago, a successful business was one that could make money and create jobs. And then 10 or 15 years ago, Google came out with this philosophy that you could make money without doing evil. And that made headlines. But we really believe it back to the roots. There's been one more shift over the last couple of years where customers are now saying, why do you need to stop it's not doing evil? Why can't you make money and do good? And that's what we're working on at Back to the Roots to try to prove. You can do good and do well. And we hope that you guys will help join us in this movement. Thank you.